In this next video, I'm going to show how to add a node to an existing Kubernetes all-in-one installation like I've shown in my previous video. So uh, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create another node. Here's my master here that we uh, created in the previous video. Uh, I'm going to go and just create another one after my session has expired. And We'll just call this one node one in case we want to add other nodes in the future. And we'll start that up. Sign that a floating IP. Okay. So here's our uh, node cloud instance. Uh, I'm going to get uh, some packages installing on this, so we're not waiting on this. But uh, basically, the uh, node, but, you know, we did an all in one before, so it included the node packages before. But the packages that we need for the node are Kubernetes node and Flannel. Um, and we're going to have to install and configure Flannel on the master as well. Flannel is the um, VXLAN tunneling that allows uh, pods on different nodes to appear to be on a flat network together. And I'll go into that later on. But we'll start those installing so it doesn't delay later. So back over to the master. Right now the master is configured, everything's listening on localhost. Uh, when you add another node, it can't access the API server, it can't access etcd. Um, so we need to change some configuration on the master in order to let external nodes talk to the API server and etcd. We normally wouldn't let, need to let the other node read etcd because uh, the API server is the one who talks to etcd, but in this case the flannel configuration is an etcd, so it needs to be listening uh, on something other than localhost as well. So we're going to start by going into the Kubernetes configuration files, and uh, we need to go to the API server. And there's an attribute called cube API address. And right now it's listening on localhost. We need to change this to uh, the all addresses IP, which is just all zeros. Then um, that is actually the only change that we need to make for the Kubernetes configuration. For the etcd configuration, we need to uh, Go to the etcd configuration file. And there are two things we need to change here. The listen client URLs. Right now it's only listening on localhost. We need to also change that to the all addresses. And then on the advertised client URLs, we need to change this. You can put the IP address of this node in here, or you can do it by name. I'm going to show you how to do it by name just because it makes it nicer to look at. Um, we're going to call this master. Now. Depending on how you're doing this, uh, you might not have DNS resolution for the names of these uh, these uh, systems. So I'm just going to go into um, Etsy hosts, and we're going to add these things manually. Depending again, depending on your DNS setup, you may not need to do this, but this is a, this is a step that will make this demonstration work on almost any setup. So I'm going to. Go get the IP addresses. This master is 18. Node 1 is 19. 18 and 19. So we're going to go um, 12, 18 is master. And 19 is node 1. And we're going to have to do the same thing on the node. That way the master and node can resolve one another, which is important. So now that we've changed these two files, uh, we need to restart um, the API server and etcd. And we'll just make sure that those came back up. All right, it appears they did. So um, the next thing we can do, we need to install Flannel on the master as well. So let's go ahead and do that. Install 
All right. And flannel is fairly simple in its design. Uh, there's only one configuration file. It's under Etsy sysconfig um, flannel. Uh, sysconfig flannel. There we go. And so on the master, you can say flannel etcd is localhost because etcd is actually running on this node on uh, on this on this system. On the node that we just spun up, this will have to be master. Uh, but we don't actually have to change anything in here. So we can just, um, the, the thing that we do need to do is uh, this flannel.comp file that I've created. Let me show it to you. It's basically just a JSON formatted file. And what this is, is it creates a, uh, this is the flat network that all the pods are going to be talking on. And the way flannel works is uh, flannel starts up on each node and it goes out and retrieves this this configuration from etcd and then it picks a slash 24 out of the slash 12 to use as the subnet for the pods on that node and then it registers with etcd saying i've got this subnet and whenever you have pod to pod communication that is the, the pods are on different nodes it, flannel uses etcd to figure out the routing so we are going to uh, put that configuration file, uh, put that configuration into etcd. And this is the command for that. It's kind of long, um, but basically we're putting the JSON file into this key into et in etcd. So if we hit that, um, and then we can do an uh, etcd control uh, get on that just to make sure that it went in and it did. So from there, now we can start uh, flannel on the master. I say the master, it's the all-in-one. It's also a node, right? Normally you wouldn't run flannel on the master because it doesn't have any pods, but in this case, it's an all-in-one. It does have pods. So we're going to do start flannel D. Okay. Let's take a look at the status here. Make sure that not getting it looks like everything went right and if we do an IPA we can see this new flannel bridge here and we can see that it has picked um, the you know dot 69 slash 24 subnet for the pods that are going to be running on this node so that's good um, so now let's run over to the node real quickly so over here, we're going to have to configure Kubernetes to contact the remote uh, API server. The API server is not on localhost anymore, so we're going to have to change some configuration files to let the node know where the master is. So under config, we need to come in here and say the cube master is at master. And that reminds me, we need to go and create this Etsy host file, right? Uh, so that they can resolve one another. And we will just copy and paste this here. Put it right there. All right. So if we ping master now, we can get it and make sure that that's right. So we got APA and right here. So that's good. All right. So the next thing we need to do on the uh, on the node is edit the kubelet file. We're going to go in here. The kubelet address, uh, for some commands, the master needs to contact the kubelet, which typically it's the other way around. Typically, the kubelet is re reporting status to the API server. But for things like uh, kube control exec and kube control logs, it needs to send commands down to the node. So we need to be listing on all addresses here. And on the host name, we're going to use, since we're using node one in our Etsy host file, we're going to use node one here. And then the API server is at master. All right. think that I've done everything. Okay, so now I think that we can just uh, enable all of the node level services. Um, oh yeah, we'll change one more thing. We need to go uh, 
into sysconfig flannel, and we need to tell it the etcd is running on the master. All right. So now we are going to enable and start flannel, docker, the kubelet, and the cube proxy. All right. And we'll check on that. All green. Okay. Let's do a general control follow. And we're not getting recurring error messages from any of the daemon, so that's good. If we do an IPA, we see that our flannel is here and it claimed the dot six slash 24. So that's good for the uh, pods on this node. Now that the kubelet is running on the node, we should be able to run a kube control get nodes. And you can see that node one is now in the nodes list and shows up as ready. So pods can actually be scheduled to it. Um, so, I mean, we can we can do that now. Um, let's start a pod. We can do cube control create Fedora. Oh, already exists. Uh, so cube control get pods. We can see that this is already running. If we do a describe on the pods, you can get uh, which node they're running on somewhere. I'm not saying it right now. Um, but if we go <laughs> into, uh, that's what this is for, right? Uh, topology, you can see we've got uh, our node. Let's see if we can refresh this. There we go. So now we have our two nodes here. There's node one, nothing scheduled on it, and our old Fedora demo pod is running on the all-in-one master. So um, because we're using the spread scheduler, if we start another pod, it should start on node one. So we can see if that uh, works just by editing this pod a little bit so that the name isn't duplicated. We'll do demo two, and we'll do a create. Um, and we'll see what that looks like here. So we can see that the Fedora pod got scheduled on our new node. And if we do a watch on it, if we do it in a hurry before the image pulls down. There we go. We can see that demo two was um, in co container creating, which means it's pulling down the image from the Docker hub onto node one. And as soon as that completes, this uh, this will the pod will start running on node one, our new node. And now it's running. If we go out and we do a cube control exec. Now, remember that this is not like Docker exec it would look for it locally on this node. We can do cube control exec and it's actually running on a different machine entirely, but we can still get, um, you know, kind of a TTY level access on, on even a, re a container running on a remote node. So we're gonna do demo two, bin bash, and now we're in the demo two uh, pod. So we just added a node to our all-in-one Kubernetes cluster.